Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be making block number two in my Sew With Me series. So if you missed block number one, I'll put a link right here on where you can get back to that because we're gonna be making 12 fun quilt blocks and then we're gonna be putting them together at the end in a fun sampler quilt. So this is just gonna be part of my new series called Sew With Me and a lot of you had requested I do a block of the month or something like that and teach you how to make some of these more traditional quilt blocks. So all the blocks in this series are gonna be kind of the more popular traditional quilt blocks and then in the next series maybe we'll get a little more out of the box. So let's go ahead and get started with today's block. Today we are gonna be making the churn dash block. I'm sure you have all heard of it before. It's a super cute block and it's also very easy to make. And I do have a fun little technique for these center blocks that is just gonna make it go so fast. And I have a fun little way to make these half square triangles as well. I think you're gonna really like it. This block could not be any easier and an entire quilt of these scrappy churn dash blocks would be absolutely adorable. So let's go ahead and get started on making today's block. Now you can actually do this any way you like. I'm choosing to use two different fabrics. So one for my kind of corners and one for my um, side pieces. You can do it all in one fabric. You can be scrappy. Uh, so these blocks are just a lot of fun. So you're gonna need two squares that are seven and a quarter of an inches and I have one in my background and one in my fun print. And then you're gonna need two strips that are two and a half inches wide by about 20 inches long. Again, one in my background and one in a fun print. So we're gonna tackle these first because this is gonna be super easy. Actually, this whole block is gonna be super easy. Um, but we're gonna take, we'll just set these aside. We're gonna take these strips and we're gonna just place them right sides together just like this. And then we're gonna sew down this edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm just gonna kinda use my, I have some seam guide tape right here, so I'm just gonna kinda make sure that my fabric stays right on that edge. And then if I notice it getting off at all, I just straighten it out. And so here is our strip right here. Now to press this, we um, sometimes these longer strips can get kind of wonky when you're sewing. And so to press it, I'm just gonna make sure that it looks nice and straight on my pressing board here so it doesn't look curved at all. And I'm gonna go ahead and set these seams. This is gonna help those threads kind of lock together in kind of a straight fashion. And then once we press those, then we can kind of flip Let's scoot it over so I have some room here. But now I can just kind of flip this open and press that back. And that should help with those kind of wonky seams. Just kind of keep everything nice and straight. And if you like, you can throw a couple of these Taylor clappers on there while well, that's cooling. And those do really work. I've had some questions on those and I really do like them. Um, they're just made of a nice wood and they're kind of heavy. And so you just press those on and they actually absorb the heat up from your um, mat and from your block and just makes it really nice um, and flat. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our corner half square triangles and there's a lot of ways to make half square triangles but since we need four of them and I'm making them all the same, I'm gonna do four at a time half square triangles. So I'm just placing these two squares right sides together and then we're gonna sew around all four sides using a one quarter of an inch seam allowance. And if you like, you can kind of pin here and there just so that it doesn't get off on you. You don't have to. If I was doing this just at home, you know, on my own, I probably wouldn't pin. But you can if you like. So let's just take this to the machine and we'll go ahead and sew that quarter of an inch seam. Now you can leave your needle in the down position. I'll show that in the next corner. You can sew to a quarter of an inch, leave your needle in the down position and twist if you like, or you can just sew right off the edge, whatever's easier. And 
And yes, I accidentally sewed over my pin because I wasn't watching. I don't really recommend you sew over your pins. However, these, um, I think they're called Little House pins. They are pretty thin and so I don't have too many problems with those. All right, and then we're just gonna press this just to make it nice and flat. And set this guy, our strip set aside for a second. And now we're gonna come over and we're going to cut this square in half diagonally and that's gonna give us our four half square triangles. So I'm just gonna line up my ruler corner to corner and just trim. And then I can just turn my mat to make my life a little easier. Again, line it up corner to corner and trim. And now we've got four half square triangles, super easy. So I'm just gonna bring these over here. I just try and kinda line them up on here so I can press them all at once. So I'm just gonna set my seams by just pressing my iron on that seam before I open it up. We kinda did that already when we uh, pressed it the first time. I just like to flatten it out to make sure it's nice and flat. So I'm just going to press all of these and you can uh, press these seams open or you can just do what I'm doing which is just pressing them to the dark. Doesn't really matter. This block doesn't have very many seams and so it's not a big deal. Now the next thing that we are definitely gonna wanna do is square up these blocks because uh, we do need them to be um, nice and square for our block and also I, whenever I'm doing this technique, I give myself a little bit of extra um, just so that it's easier when I'm trimming down these blocks. So I am going to use this seam right here in the center and I'm gonna be using this diagonal line on my ruler as well. And these blocks need to finish at four and a half. And so as you can see, I have about an eighth of an inch on all sides. So that means I can really get that line right on my seam and just make sure this block is perfect. And so I'll just do that, twist it around. You can also rotate your mat. This is a rotating cutting mat. I just don't rotate it very often. Now we have a perfect little half square triangle. So I'm gonna do that to all of my half square triangles. Just trim them up really quickly to four and a half inches. And I just take my ruler and just slide it off just like that. Because who has time? I'm just gonna be careful here. We're just doing this live, guys. So this is how long it would take me to make this block if I was doing it at home. And actually, if I was doing it in hopes of making several of these, I would be doing all of these. I would do all my strip sets first, and then I would do all my half square triangles next. And just, chain piece everything and it makes these blocks just really fun and fast. Oh, and be careful you don't accidentally cut your blocks that are sitting to the side. Okay, so now we've got four half square triangles perfectly sized just as we need them. I'm gonna set those aside and we're gonna grab our strip set here and I'm gonna just fold it in half because you know, I like to save time. I'm just gonna line up those edges, just make sure everything's nice, nice and straight. And then I'm gonna use the line on my ruler and I'm just gonna line that up right along this seam line. And I'm just gonna trim off this edge just to make sure I have a straight edge over here. Okay, so now I have a nice straight edge to work with. And these need to be four and a half inches so I'm just gonna line up my four and a half inch mark right there and then I'm also, again, lining up this line in the center of my ruler and I can even use a solid line. So now I've got two of those and then we just need two more 
And mine is gonna be, I'm working with my scraps, so you'll have a little bit more left over than I do here. I think I say 20 inches long in the pattern, but I think mine were only like 18 and a half or 19. So I think they were 18 and a half. So um, I'm just making it work. <laughs> you, you can make it work as long as you can get four and a half um, pieces out of it. 18 would be the exact number. I always try and give myself a little bit longer so that I can trim off edges and things like that. Okay, so now we have our four pieces and then we just need one more block, our center block here. Oops, and then we're gonna just put these corner squares here just like this, look how cute that is. And then we just need one more block and that's gonna be a four and a half inch center block. Then we just need one more block right here in the middle, that's our four and a half inch center block. And now we can sew rows one, two, and three together and then sew those rows together. And just so that I can keep everything the way I want it, and actually I'm looking this and I've got two really big pink ones there. So I think I'm actually going to swap those out just so they're a little bit more evenly dispersed. Okay, now I'm gonna take this second row and flip it right side down on top of this first row. Just like this. I'm gonna take this to my machine. We're gonna sew one quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way down. I'm not gonna cut my threads in between because I want to chain piece these and it's gonna hold everything in the right order. And feel free to pin these strips if you want. Um, I didn't pin them. Um, I'm not a fan of pinning unless I absolutely have to. So if there seems to be met, I'll pin. Oop. And then I just will stop right there and just make sure that seam is flipped the right direction. Okay, and then we're back here and we can just open this up like so. And it's all still together because we didn't trim those threads. And then I'm gonna go ahead, and now I am gonna pin because when I bring this over to my machine, these are attached and they're gonna be kind of hanging off the edge. So I will pin these rows. Just to kind of hold them in place. Okay, again, so one quarter of an inch down this side. Okay, so here's our finished, what our block is looking like, and then we've got these little strings still in between there. So now we're gonna press these, and I'll scoot this over so you can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to lay them flat and just set those seams really quickly. I'm gonna do the same on this side, just like that. And now I'm gonna take a look at this block and I'm gonna see which way is gonna be the easiest to press it. And I don't have any seams towards that center, so that would be easy. I also don't have any seams right here, so I can go either way. And I think for this block, since I've got a straight seam here and these kind of diagonal seams on the tips, my fabric is kind of going this way. So I'm gonna press the top and bottom rows in towards the center. I'm gonna press the center row out towards the outside and then that way when we put these together, these seams right here will nest perfectly. So I'm just gonna kinda hang on to this side so I get a nice press right there. And then I'll do this opposite on this side. Sorry, that's off camera a little bit there. Okay, then for this one it's gonna go out. And on this one it's gonna go back in and I just kind of give these a little tug like so all right and then now we can take this over 
here and we can pin these rows together. Now I like to go ahead and just flip this up and since these are going to overlap, I'm only going to do one at a time. And I'm going to pin right here at these seams. So as you can see, because we press them opposite directions, we've got this seam going to the right and this seam going to the left. So I'm just going to stick a pin in there and I usually stick it one side of the seam coming out the other. And I'm going to do the same thing here and I just grab that seam and just make sure it feels nice and smooth in there. And I just kind of press them together with my fingers until I feel that. Then I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew a quarter of an inch down this edge and then we'll add this other side the same way. Now, I'm just going to press this seam, and this one I'm going to press up because I have just straight seams right there. I'll just let that sit there for a sec. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. So we're just going to press this down, right sides together, line up these seams, and just stick a pin in there. I'm just kind of feeling that with my fingers there and just making sure it's nice and smooth. And then we'll sew a quarter of an inch down this edge. And again, I want to press this going this way. And I like to press from the back. I also like to press from the front. Just kind of double press it. And then our last thing to do is going to be to square up this block, but look at how cute that churn dash block is. And I want to square this up so that my points here are about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Sometimes that works out for me, sometimes it doesn't. This one looks like it's a little bit closer than I want. But I'm just going to do my best. And then when I sew that into my quilt, you'll never notice. And this is all I trimmed off that block, so not too much, um, but that will make a difference in your finished quilt. So I do always make sure to trim up my blocks. So there's our finished churn dash block. As you can see, it was super easy. And you can make these all the same colors. That's kind of more traditional. You can make them different colors like I did. You could even do your colored fabrics on the outside and then have your background fabric on the actual churn dash shape and just really make that block pop. Um, it's totally up to you, but you can definitely kind of change the look of this block just by changing the fabric. You could even put, say, a red fabric here and that would make it look more like a circle um, or like an O. So, you know, just play with your fabrics, play with the pattern, super easy and fun. Don't forget to download your PDF pattern in the description box below this video, and hopefully you had fun sewing with me today. All right, guys, that is it for today's block. I hope you liked it, the churn dash block. I think mine turned out really fun, and I'm really actually having a good time sewing with my scraps. It's nice to just grab a bin and pull some stuff out and hope it all goes together, and in the end, I think it turns out really cute. So if you like this block or this video series, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe that way I know to keep making them for you we have 10 more blocks to go this is block number two and don't forget to hit that notification bell that way you'll be notified anytime I upload a video so you won't be missing out on any of the fun thank you so much for joining me for today's project and I will see you next time